Hey there, welcome back to Daisy Lane Design. I'm Allison, and today we're gonna to talk about ruffles or gathers in your sewing work, which gives a nice extra bit of dimension to whatever you're working on. So let's go take a look at some possibilities. Whether you're adding ruffles or gathers to a garment, a bag, or an accessory, you'll be adding dimension and interest to that item. And while ruffles and gathers are accomplished rather simply, there are some considerations to keep in mind depending on your desired finished look. Ruffles and gathers can be completed either by machine or by hand and are featured in my upcoming yet to be named tote pattern. So let me show you how I do them. The first thing you should know about ruffling or gathering is that it's gonna take a larger piece of fabric and cinch it up quite a bit smaller. So depending on your pattern and the directions that it contains, you're going to want to start off with a much bigger piece across than you'll wind up finishing up with. So just keep that in mind. Second thing, because we go from a straight piece of fabric to a cinched up one, you're gonna to want to deal with any of your raw edges down here before you go ahead and do any of your ruffling. So what I mean by this is if you're making a skirt, say for instance, and this bottom edge is going to be hemmed, do your hemming while your fabric is still flat before you go ahead and ruffle your fabric or gather your fabric so that it doesn't distort the bottom here, your bottom edge, and you can get an easier and cleaner hem on the bottom. If you're gonna be ruffling somewhere in the middle of your fabric, and both the top edge and the bottom edge are gonna be exposed, go ahead and hem both of those sides beforehand. For our purposes, we are going to be encasing our ruffle inside a seam, so hem pre-hemming is not necessary. So this top one I did just by hand, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. The bottom hem I'm going to do on my machine. So head on over with me and we'll take care of that together. All right, here we are at my machine and this is what it looks like when I first turn it on. This is my stitch length right here, this 2.5. We wanna make that as long as the machine will go. So usually most machines will go up to a five. Point oh, and that just means the stitches in between each stitch, they're longer than they normally would be on a seam. And that's what allows for pulling the strings and cinching it all up into a ruffle. So getting ready to sew, I'm going to sew a half inch in from the raw edge here. I'm also going to pull my bobbin and regular thread strings along so I have something to grab onto when I'm wanting to gather everything up. And I'm not going to back tack at the beginning of this seam because I want the the threads to be able to move. If I back tack, then they're just gonna be, it's gonna be like sewing a regular seam and I won't be able to pull on the threads to make the pleat and gather. So I'm just gonna sew down this long side of the fabric. Coming up on the end here, I'm just gonna finish my stitches and again, pull a long string before I cut the threads. Right, there is my first long basting stitch and I'm going to do a second one a half inch below my first one exactly the same way I did before. So here are my two lines and the reason for the second seam there is for stability and strength when you go ahead and pull on those threads and cinch everything up together it just gives it a little bit more security when you do that. So I'm going to cinch up my gather and you're gonna put the top threads to the side there and pull from the bobbin threads, which are the threads on the wrong side of the fabric here. So I'm gonna find bobbin thread one and bobbin thread two and use them. They're caught up on each other, sorry. And use them to pull and gather my threads. 
this is a slow, slower process when you machine baste. The stitches are all uniform and they're pretty tight. I don't know if tight's the right word, but you just have to finesse it a little bit more. So pull on the two strings, gather it right here, and then smooth it out a little more. So this just takes a little patience and a little time, but you just work your way across the entire area that you're going to gather in this way. So that's machine ruffling and or gathering. Now I'll show you how to do some hand gathering or hand ruffling. You might be wondering why you would opt to do some hand gathering. Oh, hi. And maybe it's something as simple as you'd like to sit in a cozy chair and do this work by hand while watching TV. Or maybe you'd like to try your, set, your hand at hand stitching and this is a good place to start. Whatever the reason, I'm gonna show you some tips for how to get that done. So hand gathering just requires a needle and a length of thread and you're going to work what's called a running stitch where you work the needle up and down, up and down through the fabric in front of you and then as it fills up you just slide the work off the back end of the needle. You keep repeating this until you make it all the way to the end of the fabric. This takes a little bit longer than machine stitching. You can see here that I've added a second line of stitches, hand stitching as well, just like I did when I did machine stitching. And now it's time to pull the threads. There's only one set of threads on the end because there are no bobbin and top stitches. And pulling the hand sewn stitches is a lot easier than pulling the machine sewn stitches. So there are benefits there are pros and cons to each way. The machine stitching goes quicker, but the pulling is slower. The hand stitching goes slower, but the pulling is quicker. It really is a matter of your personal preference um, as to how you want to do it. Finally, you'll want to evenly distribute your gathers and ruffles across the width of your fabric, making it as wide as you're needing it for whatever pattern you're working on. You can see there with the blue thread, that's my top um, that I did with hand stitching and down here is the bottom. So there's a slight difference between the two different styles. Once it's sewn into the piece, whatever basting stitches you have there, you'll, you can pick out if they're showing, you can pick them out if they're not already caught in your seam allowance. So that is how we do ruffles. So there you have it, two different ways to do ruffles, both by hand and machine, whichever your preference. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, we're going to use this particular application in an upcoming pattern that I'm working on currently. Um, there is more information in a blog post I wrote about that. I'll link that in the show notes below so that you can take a look at that. And there's a contest there because I haven't yet come up with a name for the bag. So definitely check out those details there. If you like what you've seen here today, if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment, a like, or a subscribe. And there's also a link to a Ko-Fi which is just an opportunity for you to support the work and the classes that I'm offering here on this channel. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you next time. Happy sewing guys, bye.